Call to order tonight's regular meeting of the Board of Education. Roll call, please. Mr. Marin? Here. Ms. Coyle? Here. Ms. Redonio? Here. Ms. Hoover? Ms. Steckety? Here. Ms. Conover? Here. Mr. Avia? Here. Okay. Let's say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. The chair will entertain a motion to enter closed session to discuss personnel issues and collective bargaining. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Deckety? Yes. Mr. Marin? Yes. Ms. Conover? Yes. Mr. Avia? Yes. Ms. Coyle? Yes. Ms. Rodonio? Yes. Okay. Let's go to close. We're going to be reviewing documents that are in the black folder. So.
Uh, Tuesday, June 22nd, uh, 2021, and we are resuming open session. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the May 18th, 2021 regular meeting of the Board of Education as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the closed session of the May 18th, 2021 regular meeting of the Board of Education as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the May 20, 2021 special meeting of the Board of Education as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the next item on the agenda is public comment. Just to um, remind folks of our guidelines, um, we have five minutes per person um, for public comment. Um, and the board uh, does not respond to items that are not on the agenda. So is, does anyone have a public comment? You, Elaine. Go ahead. All right. Hopefully, you guys can hear me through the mic. Otherwise, I'll just talk really loud. Um, hi, my name is Elaine Rogala. I am a Westmont resident, and I have four kids: ten, eight, three, and eighteen months. So, very invested in our school district, as we'll be here for a little while. Um, and I have emailed um, board members in the past, so you guys have probably heard from me, um, but I haven't made a public comment, so I'm going on the record officially. Um, I am um, coming today to talk about the future of elementary school planning. The I'm part of the um, Elementary Future Planning Task Force, and we had a great first meeting, so I want to thank the administration for putting that together. I think it's going to be really valuable. And I do come to the task force with an opinion on how my family would be affected by the um, any changes that are made to our school district. and um, But I'm going to keep an open mind on some of the conversations that we're having and um, review all of the options. Um, some of the considerations that I have um, that impact my family are the fact that I've got such a wide range of kids and their siblings being in school together. Um, my current, going into third grade now, I have to remember because it's the summer, commented, um, my third grader commented on his first day of kindergarten that he was really excited that when he was in fifth grade, he was going to walk his sister to school who would be at that time in kindergarten. And so um, the idea of the siblings being together and being able to have those um, experiences together is really important to me. And um, the community of parents that I have been able to find at our school um, and across the district has been really valuable. Part of how I have been able to make those community connections is through staying after school at the playground and connecting with other parents, being involved in the school, um, being part of the PTO and um, being a volunteer at different school events and being able to do that at um, the elementary school is really important to me. So those are some of the things that really impact my decision on um, what I would like to see for the future of our elementary schools. So what I really want to come to the school board today and um, say is just a reminder of the fact that as we go into our second year with grade level centers, it can be really tempting to think of grade level centers as our status quo because now it's our second year. And so I want to re remind everybody that our status quo is two K through five buildings. And so when we're making a decision to make a change, we need to be really careful about what goes into that decision and make sure we're not making a change for change's sake, but really to see a benefit. And I'm excited to see what comes of the future planning task force. What's it called? Elementary future planning task force. Um, I think it's going to have some really good discussions over the summer. And when it comes back to the school board, then I hope that the discussions that the school board is going to have are around 
the pros and cons of our status quo compared to any change that we want to make for our future and really seeing measurable improvement for our district. Um, again, I want to thank the administration for putting together the task force. I think it's really helpful for the transparency of this entire project. And I hope that it gives you guys some good information to make decisions whenever that date actually comes about. So thank you. Thanks, Elaine. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? John, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Costell. I am a parent of, I have two students in the district now, and I'm a, being a musician myself, I am distraught about what's happening with the band program now at the district. Uh, we already have issues with enrollment due to the junior high not replacing the band director last year. And now they're going to have the high school band director spread across the district. as. Uh, I understand it teach, uh, teaching fifth all the way through twelfth. Uh, the effects of this decision will lead to a dismal future for the band program as a lot of WJHS students have already quit band because there was no band class. I spoke to many students and parents and families and the central theme was that they didn't want to quit playing their instruments but they didn't see any reason to continue because there was no there was no band or group you know activity and um, besides the music itself the social aspect is uh, greatly important to that um, so we are at a point where it's very important to build the program back up um, to what it once was and hopefully even greater um, but the high school program itself has taken many hits recently with um, Rotating, rotating band directors and uh, multiple other challenges. So I, I just think we need to hire a new band director for the junior high that can dedicate themselves to that and uh, so that the high school band teacher can concentrate on, on that age group uh, as, it, as it has been in the past because there's so many different um, facets of each school. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. James, go ahead. Uh, my name is Jimmy McDermott. I'm the parent of a uh, rising seventh grader at uh, Westmont Junior High. Uh, I am taking the floor just to uh, echo everything that John said. I am also concerned that uh, any individual, uh, any educator, or any artist taking on a workload like that would, uh, would suffer from burnout very soon carrying that type of load. And I say that as an educator myself. Um, and uh, just simply to add, I mean, I, w as, a, as a town, I think, and a community and as a school district, we should value music greatly. It's the backbone of this town. Muddy Waters lived around the corner from here. so. I am all for music education uh, and love of music being built at uh, every step of the way through the process of, of, of a child's education in this district. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Heather, go ahead. Uh, my name is Heather Booth. I emailed the board my comments, but I'm presenting them here as well. Uh, I've been a Westmont resident for 16 years. I have two students who will both be in the junior high come this fall. Um, they'll, at this point, they're both planning on being in the band. Um, I am so increasingly disappointed in the way the band program is being treated. Specifically, this year, the decision to staff fifth through 12th grade bands with a single instructor, well qualified as he is. First, it's important for all the board members, those of you who might not have junior high students yet, to understand that the junior high master calendar does not permit band students to fully avail themselves of the various electives that the junior high offers. Um, choosing band means no art. It means no industrial arts, no Spanish, no technology. 
ban students make that choice, or rather they have made that choice in the past, partially inspired by what they've seen their elder peers achieve. Younger siblings see the dedication of practice, early morning jazz band meetings, evening concerts, students at the elementary school see the big kids showcase their talents when they attend community parades, football games, or when the bands tour the elementary schools to perform. Our students, when provided ample support, structure, and opportunity, deliver on the district's promise of excellence to inspire young students to follow in their footsteps. My incoming eighth grader has been a band student since fifth grade when she visited the high school to select an instrument. She picked the trumpet, inspired by a high school trumpet player who encouraged her to really belt it out, and she did. It was wonderful. In sixth grade, she switched to the trombone because she wanted to do her part to help balance out the instruments in the band. There weren't enough trombonists, there weren't enough low bass, and so she changed her instrument in, um, in that regard. She beamed with pride at a concert when Ms. Fisher pointed out that the band had an all-female low brass section, which is a rarity in, among bands. Um, I asked her about her band experience this morning, and she said, in fifth grade, it was pretty crap because nobody sounded good. <laughs> but sixth, sixth grade band was good. Band at its best was when everybody was cooperating. I like how people sound when they're playing together. It made me feel cool. It made me feel like I spent my time well and I was learning stuff and proud because I could hear how far I'd come. In sixth grade, I really liked hanging out in the band room because I got to listen to the eighth graders. Last year, I wanted to be as good as the eighth graders. But when the sixth and seventh graders see how unpracticed way they are, we are, they're gonna lose inspiration. It's heartbreaking to see my student, my 13-year-old, be inspired to find value and hear her hard work paying off, to seek to inspire other students, and then lose that drive due to staffing decisions. Staffing decisions that her school administration has put forth and her, the board has upheld. And now, as she approaches eighth grade and sees high achieving students leave the band because of lack of support, again, she sees her school administration and board reinforcing to her and to all the other band students through this plan that places only one teacher across eight grade levels that the band program is not valuable. It's not as worthwhile. It's maybe not as good a use of her time as one of those other electives. Band is valuable. It is worthwhile. It's not just a good use of time. It's essential. It's an essential part of a school curriculum and a part of the school community. Band provides a place for students to be in community, working together to achieve something as a group. It provides the same kind of reinforcement that athletics do. Work hard, cultivate dedication, and be rewarded with both your collective and your individual accomplishments. As the board receives this plan to install Ms. Biederman as the sole band director for students in grade five through 12, for 11 through 18 year olds, to all of the district band opportunities, I ask you to consider what message are you sending? In what other subjects would this be acceptable? Many of us, myself included, have worked more than one job at a time. And if you're one of those people, as I am, you know how taxing that is, how difficult it is to be fully present at one job because of the demands of the other that's always lingering in the back of your mind. How time is never ample enough to execute all of the ideas and explore all of the potential avenues for growth. How both roles ultimately will not have the full benefit of your professional expertise. Westmont schools claim to celebrate excellence. Is this staffing plan celebrating the excellence of our students and of our music program? Or is it one more token that will nudge the band program limping to obsolescence? CUSD 201 is a district of small schools and large opportunities, but what large opportunities are being offered here? I ask the board to reflect on whether this decision is one that will lead to outcomes that, you can, that can proudly stand next to the other accomplishments that the district touts. Are you doing as much to inspire our band students as they can do, given the proper support, structure, and opportunity to inspire each other? 
I urge the board and administration to make a plan to fully and equitably restore a rich and robust band program. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? The next item on the agenda um, is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Number one, personnel recommendations. Sergio Gonzalez, Westmont Junior High Literacy Teacher. Holly Forsyth, Westmont Junior High Social Worker. Kevin West, District Psychologist. Thomas White, Westmont High School Girls Varsity Basketball Coach. Jamie Tasenga, Business Office Accounting Coordinator. Nicholas Strobel, Westmont High School Summer School Bo Summer Boost Program. Peggy Barrett, Elementary Summer School TA. Veronica Williams Hall, Elementary Summer School TA. Francisco Delgado, Westmont High School Summer School TA. Isabella Maud, Westmont High School Summer School TA. Anastasia Lepasek, Westmont High School volunteer cheerleading coach. Patrick Jennings, Westmont High School head varsity football coach. And the resignations. Number two, renewal of student accident insurance. Number three, approval of towel service. Number four, approval of board travel expenses. Number five, approval of May 2021 expenditure report. Number six, approval of June 2021 expenditure report. Number seven, ratification of May 2021 regular payroll. Number eight, appointment of school treasurer. Number nine, resolution to abate working cash funds. Number 10, disposal of equipment. And we have a motion. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Marin? Yes. Ms. Conover? Yes. Mr. Avia? Yes. Ms. Coyle? Yes. Ms. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Rodonio? Yes. Ms. Steckety? Yes. Before we move on, could I just make one quick comment about personnel recommendations? I just wanted to give a little shout out to the new summer school math teacher at Westmont um, High School, Nick Strobel. I've had the privilege of working with him for three years as a teacher at Nazareth Academy, um, and he is an amazingly passionate, dedicated, enthusiastic, one of the most positive people that you'll meet, and I think he's going to serve um, the high school students really well this summer in math. That's great. So I just wanted to say that. Great. Thank you. Awesome. All right, the next item on agenda um, are the information discussion items, the first one being the planning for the 2021-22 school year. So we are in the process of uh, planning for the opening of the school year, and, and I think I've mentioned it before, that the plan is five days in person, um, and all students returning for full days. Um, I know our parents have a lot of questions about, you know, what about uh, social distancing? Will masks be required? All these different things. And again, we take direction from the State Board of Ed, Illinois Department of Health. There was actually a um, conference call yesterday for superintendents with the ISBE and IDPH, and we all anticipated that we were going to receive some guidance to help us continue our planning. And they did not offer us any additional information. They said they'll get it to us as soon as they can. So at this point, we don't know yet if, um, you know, what, if we'll have to social distance, if we'll have to be six feet at lunch. And some of those things obviously impact, you know, like do we need additional desks, you know, to help with lunch and so forth, um, let alone trying to get those items um, in light of some of the challenges of getting, you know, and with shipping and so forth. So, you know, we're asking for everybody's patience. We're, you know, as soon as we get that information, we'll be communicating that information to our school families. But again, at this time, we are still planning to be five days, full days in person, uh, starting with the first day of school. Have they provided any updates on um, vaccine next steps? I think we're at 12 and up can be vaccinated right now, but. Yeah, the IDPH didn't have any information about when they thought the age would be lowered you know um, I know that's not going to be mandated and there's some question as to whether or not school districts can even ask the question okay. of, of families if their right, children have been vaccinated have or not. right so we're still waiting on all that all those yeah I guess I'm making the leap that a, an availability of a vaccine for the younger age children might mean right restrictions right. get loosened restrictions. at least for elementary right. um, you know 
since the other age groups are. Um, I just wanted to say I appreciate also the memo that was put together mm-hmm. and um, by the local superintendents, superintendents um, yeah. to Governor Pritzker. And, you know, I, I think it's, you know, as a fellow administrator, that's the trickiest thing right now is we're all eager to plan what this school year is going to look like and make all, we have, right. we all have all of the same questions and right. um, hopefully we'll get that guidance sooner rather than later. But I appreciate the efforts and the transparency and, you know, we're working on it. Right. So, yeah. Right. We Thank are. you for that. We are. Yeah. Kevin, I have a question. As it stands now, uh, I don't know if you, um, the team has looked at, say, with the uh, mandates that we have right now, um, how do we look if we, like, when we open, if we use the same three feet? Right. You know, with, um, so we have space. And yeah, we have, we have space. The challenge is going to be lunch. Okay. You know, that, and so, like, um, the elementary buildings, you know, they're using not only their cafeteria, but the gym as well. So that we'll have to continue doing so we could accommodate them the junior high is is the high school definitely has enough space and the junior high is also a uh, question is um if we get up to close to 100 percent accommodating lunch that's the biggest question and then again also the challenge for schools if um they allow three feet but contact tracing is based upon six feet then obviously that also creates some you know what students may have to go home and, and those types of things and I know it won't be a mandate but will they ask or have a number for at least the high school and the junior high as far as the percentage um, of vaccinated students will they up, try to obtain that um, to look at maybe again adjusting right this? if we if we're able to ask the question yes we'd be able to that would be our intent to find out I, w- I mean I I'm just speculating but I would think that you know, if there are restrictions about or guidance on contact tracing, you're going to have to find out about vaccination because if right. you're closer than three feet, you know, this child might have to quarantine, this one might not. Right. So, I, you know, we'll just have to still wait and see, but right. yeah, hopefully that right. will be the case. So I have uh, two questions. One thing I just wanted to call a, a couple of the questions that were, that were asked that, and I really just want to say them out loud so that everybody can kind of know the questions that the superintendents have been asking for guidance on that we can't necessarily make any movement on until we have guidance from the state. Um, And I love this memo because it is incredibly helpful. So, um, you know, some of the things that that are called out, getting clarity on social distance guidelines for adults versus students, vaccinated versus unvaccinated, regular school activities versus extracurriculars, um, schools that may implement a rapid COVID, test, COVID testing program versus those that don't, um, board meetings, non-school groups that utilize our facilities, that borrow our facilities, and then also indoor versus outdoor. Um, there's some questions in here around quarantine guidance, um, contact tracing in there as well, masking guidelines, and then there's also um, additionally kind of wrapping it up with the vaccination records guidance that of course um, we need to get some more clarity on. But right. again, we're asking for that clarity, and we can't move on some things until we get um, until we get direction from from the state. So, um, you know, some of that will the schools be provided access to the vaccination information? Um, will schools be expected to or allowed to collect and maintain vaccination information? Um, from employees, students, and others. We already know that for employees, yes, but it's a real big question on students. Um, Will staff members or students be compelled to share vaccination data with schools? Um, And then if schools can require vaccinations or testing of staff or student members. So those are all pieces that are um, up in the air that we do not have answers to and we cannot really move forward on until we have some guidance, which is a bummer because Mm -hmm. we'd like to have a plan for next year. We know that. Um, So I just wanted to highlight those, but then I have a question around, um, there's still a question if we are gonna have to provide remote learning, is that correct? Um, So has the administration been looking at what that remote learning might look like and what we learned from this past year and what we may or may not be doing for this next year? And I am specifically talking about what happened at the grade schools um, and at Manning where we had the rumors and the Zoomers and the kids that were in the room had to be on the computer in addition to the kids on the Zoom. So I am specifically speaking about that, but has the administration started thinking about that in the worst case scenario yes. that we have to do what we did this past year? Right. So this is 
early on. So, you know, I, well, I know we're not live streaming right now, but when people <laughs> watch this, I hope they don't, you know, because we're just considering this. But uh, we're not going to do rumors and zoomers or in terms of simultaneously. Um, so students that are, um, if, and again, there, there'll have to be some medical certification as to why they cannot attend. Um, we would probably treat them similar to any student who, because of illness, whatever it may be, is not able to attend the day program, that they would um, receive as asynchronous instruction. And then on top of that, they would receive additional uh, support, <clears throat> but it would not be at the same exact time that their classmates are, are being taught. So we would not have the same, what they experienced last year would not be the experience this year. Wonderful. And I understand we made that decision and we had to roll with that decision and, um, you know, it hounded us a bit right. out of the year, but I'm glad that we have learned from that and that that's not the, that's not, if we have to do right. this at least, um, we know that we're not going to continue with that that element, at least, of the plan from last year. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. I have two more super quick questions. Um, the first one is once we do get that guidance from ISBE and IDPH, as a public institution, we can't just choose or vote as a board to, like, just ignore it, correct? Like, right. We have, okay. Right. I just wanted to make right. that very clear. Right. Um, and then also to Adina's question about, like, what if we are faced with some of the same restrictions with spacing, but we want to bring in the full capacity of students? Sounds like we're good with Westmont, with junior high. Um, I think, you know, since we kind of know what that looks like, I guess I'd feel a little bit more comfortable if we kind of knew what that was going to look like at the elementary school level, since that's a little bit more of an unknown. So nothing super urgent, but right. just to know that, right. you know, we have a solution for that in the event that mm -hmm. that's the situation. Sure. That's it. Great. Any other questions? Okay. The next item for information and discussion is the Certificate of Excellence. I um, just wanted to make the board and the public aware that the district received um, the Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting again this year for the June 30th, 2020 audit. This is the 15th year that the district has received um, that award. The certificate or the uh, comprehensive annual financial report is um, comparable to a public entity's um, annual audit their annual report sorry and um, so anyway it's um, it's a document that we post um, for the public to see and it gives a lot of great information about our district it also helps us if we're issuing bonds and things like that so again it's it's similar to a corporate financial report and um, we're you know pleased that we have been awarded the certificate again this year that's great news thank you congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> Okay, the third item is athletic sponsor proposal. Uh, included in uh, board docs, anytime that um, an entity wants to advertise at any of our schools or any of our athletic fields, the board has to approve it. And uh, this is also, this request is also coming with a donation to the high school athletic department. So the high school athletic department would receive a $2,000 donation in exchange for that. Um, they would need to distribute 500 magnets and then um, display two signs outside at the football field, a banner in the gym, uh, six social media posts, two per athletic season, and then uh, PA announcements at every athletic event. And um, then also the check would be presented at a football game and they would like to have a Kia automobile present as well. Um, so this is an opportunity for the board to kind of review it if you have any questions or need additional information. And then um, if the board is in favor of it, then it would be brought to the July board meeting for approval by the board. I just have one question. Is, the, is this something we've done in the past? We, we have had other um, advertisers, you know, who have typically it's through the through the athletic boosters. So the okay. boosters ah. accept the donation, but again, it's proof through the uh, school board. This donation is going directly to our athletic department. Okay. Is, is there a standard to how much, um, I guess, I guess for a donation for this amount of advertising? Um, um, no, we don't have like a guideline or. Right, like a matrix. Yeah. Right, and benefits. I don't know if we can negotiate the fee or not. Yeah, I don't know if there's a comparison or something yeah. to look I mean, back I, on. 
yeah, exactly. I could check with the boosters and see, you know, typically if you have gone to like our baseball games or football games along the fence, there will be advertisements. Mm -hmm. So I could find out what the typical. Their park districts maybe. I don't know if they would. Yeah. You know, the dollar amount that they would at all. Mm -hmm. Well, if they want to sponsor our Scholastic Bowl team, the, the fee's higher. <laughs> <laughs> For national recognition. Yeah, just Definitely. <laughs> and I will Absolutely. share with you in another district I worked for, they actually provided the car for the driver's ed program. Now we've purchased ours, so this is a little Aww. little thing, but that's an interesting, interesting idea, idea yes. Kim. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a year two request. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> um, that's interesting. So are you looking for us to wait? If, if you're in okay on this? with it being brought to the board for the July meeting. July twenty. Yeah. July meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we're moving on to action items. The first is the approval of the roof bid. Ooh, that's being pulled. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's tonight. being pulled? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Can I give a brief explanation, yeah. Kim? So um, we went out to bid the uh, roof um, at the high school needs to be replaced, and then one section needs to be repaired. Um, the replacement is covered by insurance and repairs are covered by insurance, but we were also looking at um, on the other section of roof instead of just repairing it, replacing it because it's at that time anyway. And what we're running into is um, issues with being able to obtain roofing materials, being able to get firm commitments upon about when materials can be delivered and then at what price those materials will be available at and so um, we're working with our attorney and the insurance company and we may come back to you and you know potentially even ask for a special board meeting if we can get things worked out but just some of the timelines and things that we're running into did not make it a viable um, decision for this evening that's fair thank you Okay, so the first action item will be the approval of the contract with Cashman Stoller Group for the HVAC replacement at Westmont Junior High School. Uh, yes, so um, we always bring to you um, the approvals for contracts for our architect to work on projects. We've been talking about the HVAC replacement project for um, quite a long time. When we did our ESSER um, 3 presentation, we're um, setting aside $600,000 in the ESSER 3 grant to go toward this project. We have been accumulating funds in the O&M fund for this project as well. And then depending upon where um, our building automation system uh, finalizes out at, we may have a little bit of working cash money that we can put toward this. And then in the end, we're um, also looking at um, issuing new working cash bonds and we'll have that discussion at a future meeting. But um, based on, there's two different options for the HVAC replacement. So the cost, replacement costs uh, range from about 2.8 million to a little over $4 million plus the architectural and engineering costs. And those costs are uh, just uh, about $376,000. So um, we're presenting this proposal to you tonight so the architect um, can start working on the bid spec so that we can go out to bid hopefully in December. For the project and then start it next summer okay so just to clarify to make sure that i'm hearing and understanding it right this is not necessarily approving the bid for the hvac it's this is not the bid we us haven't even prepared to, to pay the no architect to work on it's that just piece. for the architect okay. to start the, process. the process so yeah. once once it goes out to bid then that bid approval would be brought to the board um, for approval at a at a future meeting once we have all the bids back and we have a, a bid that we want to recommend okay good that that's what i thought but i wanted to make sure that yep. i was understanding it yeah no this is just to begin the process and um so whether you present a bid or not there will be costs incurred to to begin the process so will the architect come to us to give us uh, both options will we be picking the options or between um, the two I you know, we can certainly have discussions, like our facility committee definitely will be having discussions about it, about which one makes sense. 
Um, I don't know if he's going to bid both. I know he'll be working with um, Joe Smith, our director of facilities, okay. on that as well, and um, okay. kind of see wh what makes sense. Thanks. Any other questions for Kim? Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the architectural services contract with Cashman Stoller Group for the HVAC replacement project at Westmont Junior High School as presented. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Avia? Yes. Ms. Coyle? Yes. Ms. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Rodonio? Yes. Ms. Steckety? Yes. Mr. Marin? Yes. Ms. Conover? Yes. Okay. The next action item is the approval of authorization to pay additional June bills for fiscal year 2021. Are there any comments on what's posted on the agenda? Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to authorize and direct the treasurer to pay any additional bills received in June, July 2021 that have been budgeted for in the current fiscal year. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Coyle? Yes. Ms. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Rodonio? Yes. Ms. Steckety? Yes. Mr. Marin? Yes. Ms. Conover? Yes. Mr. Avia? Yes. Okay. And the next item for action is the approval of the Sunrise 2021 2022 transportation contract. Any discussion for that? Or questions, Kim? Does anyone have questions or want me to review it? Okay. Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the one-year contract extension for special education transportation with Sunrise Southwest LLC for July 2021 through June 2022 as presented. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Rodonio? Yes. Ms. Steckety? Yes. Mr. Marin? Yes. Ms. Conover? Yes. Mr. Avia? Yes. Ms. Coyle? Yes. Okay. And our last action item is the adoption of the 2021-2022 routine business office resolutions. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the adoption of the routine 2021-2022 business office resolutions as presented. So moved. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Ms. Rodonio. Yes. Ms. Steckety. Yes. Mr. Marin. Yes. Ms. Conover. Yes. Mr. Avia. Yes. Ms. Coyle. Yes. Ms. Hoover. Yes. Okay. Uh, moving on to the superintendent's report. All right. I have a few items in my report this evening. Uh, first of all, just a reminder to our school families that um, registration will be done electronically for the 21-22 school year, uh, similar to what we did last uh, summer as well. And you'll complete your registration through Skyward. The registration will open on July 30th and close August 6th and more information will be shared with our families. Um, the uh, joint conference will be uh, November 19th through the 21st, and you board members have already indicated if you will be attending this year. Uh, Jess Rodonio is our delegate for the board meeting. Uh, Jess has a conflict, and so the board, we need somebody else to step in. <laughs> and the delegate, basically what you do is there's Prior to the board meeting, there will be several resolutions that the uh, school board association will vote on. And ultimately, those are the um, resolutions then that the association then reaches out to the legislatures to try to get legislation passed. And so as the district's representative, you cast a vote on whether or not the district is in favor of the resolution or not. Um, typically, there is very little controversy. Um, and anytime there is, usually the delegate would kind of review them and say, ooh, I better ask my other board members how they feel about this. And so then at a board meeting prior to the conference, you would say, it would be a discussion item and just say, I just need to know where our board members sit on this. Uh, the meeting's usually that Saturday, um, so the 20th at nine o'clock in the morning is when the that meeting is to cast your vote on the various resolutions. So, so the real responsibility of the delegate is to go do the homework, right? Right. For, for the right. group. That's what it boils down to. Right. Okay. And the conference will send that out to us ahead of yes. time. Yes. Yes. We'll get copies of it prior to the the. Uh, Just the delegate conference. or the whole board? Um, the whole board gets copies. Okay. 
And I feel bad that I can't attend. So like, I may, we can make this a group project. I can do the homework <laughs> part like, and send somebody else to vote if that makes it more palatable or if somebody just wants to take over for me, that's fine too. <laughs> I'm game. All right. Thanks, Ange. Ange. Thank you, thank you, Ange. All right, then moving on to- The whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. I can do the homework, yes. I can okay. do the homework as well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, and then uh, just quickly on the uh, elementary future planning, our task force, uh, which was one of our public comments this, this evening. Um, we have our task force. They met on June 23rd. That first meeting was brainstorming. Oh, tomorrow's June 23rd. Oh. Two what weeks ago. Our next meeting is June 23rd. <laughs> so two weeks ago is <laughs> yes. the first meeting. Uh, thank you. And um, the our essential question is there in board docs, how can our building configuration for the elementary age students provide optimal systems of education, equal access to all of our resources, long-term sustainability? And so it's really looking at the bigger picture in terms of how do we best utilize our resources and what does that look like in our schools um, to best meet the needs of our students both currently and the future. Uh, so we brainstormed at the first meeting, different configurations, different solutions, everything from maintaining our two elementary buildings to building a brand new elementary school um, to possibly shifting um, a grade to either south or a grade to the junior high. So a lot of different ideas. And so now this, we then gathered some information, some pros and cons, but then at our meeting tomorrow night, we'll dig a little bit deeper, pros and cons, what additional information committee members meet um, with the goal at our third meeting, kind of paring down those options to kind of bring it down to maybe two possible directions to, to investigate. The fourth meeting then is that committee creating an action plan of how we're going to now get additional input from a broader group of stakeholders and not just school families, but community members as well. And ultimately in November, bringing a uh, recommendation to the board to consider. So, and in the meantime, we have a web page. We're updating that web page on a regular basis with new information. The recordings of the meetings are there as well. So, if you can't attend a meeting, you can listen to the meeting and get the, the gist of our discussion. Um, so, we're trying to be as transparent as possible as we work through the process. Where can people access the web page, Kevin? Um, if they go to our home page and the drop down menu, Okay. One of the um, items listed is the future plan task force. Great. And they just click on that. Great. Plus, Thank there's you. a link in board docs. Did Nadine solve that password issue? Yes. Okay. Yep. Cool. What, what was the issue? The recording, you needed a password. Mm -hmm. So Nadine corrected that, our um, director of technology. So it's open access right. now. Wonderful. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry. I've, sure. It's okay to ask questions. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, one was, I. I I did watch most of the recording of the other night and also heard some comments today in today's meeting about, about availability of information and, 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 and so I'm just, I, I, there's a website and I'm sure that we're posting information to that website. Are there any issues um, responding to, to, to the request for information, whether it's, is there any information that we're not able to generate or gather? Is there any information that's been asked for? So my, my big, right. I guess the blanket question I'm asking is, if members of this task force are asking information, are we able to get that information to them in, in a timely and, and um, convenient fashion? Uh, or or are, there, are there some issues with some of that? No, we're able to, gather the information and get them. You know, we started uh, sharing the information last week and uh, making it available on the web page as well. So we are able to gather the information that's being requested. And I mean, to me, it seems like the most powerful thing about the task force is the, the, that whatever happens going forward, that everyone feels heard and, right. invo and right. involved. Right. And, and transparency is, is right. a foundation of that. So I'm just making sure that mm -hmm. I understand how if there are any roadblocks that we, we know to getting information to people that we know what those are. Absolutely. And the other question was, uh, board members, you, uh, if we want to attend, we just uh, attend the Zoom meeting, is that what? Right, okay. right. And, and you know, I know the Opens Meetings Act, you can, you know, be an observer and listen in. 
um, where we have to be careful is if um, you know we have several board members participating then we possibly could so, so maybe best just to watch the recordings watch the recordings I, or I listened in last you can time. Sit on I, your I hands. just <laughs> blank, sc blank screened and listened to the whole thing okay. Yeah. okay yep thanks sure um, then uh, junior high and high school band I believe this these two sentences create quite some anxiety <laughs> um, and I apologize for that but I just want to you know yes we asked our high school band director to take band 5 through 12 this upcoming year first let me go on record I have two older daughters um, as a matter of fact one's getting married in two weeks um, but I have uh, two two older daughters and they in a similar size district they went through band 5 through 12 and I know how important that experience is I know how important the fine arts are and our band program is and there's nobody wants our band program to be as successful as it's always been than than I do so any decisions we're making is is in no way uh, meant to indicate that it is not valued um, with the decision what we're facing there the parents are absolutely correct we the way that we received the resignation of our junior high band teacher the timing COVID-19 all those things the beginning of the year we didn't have band but then our band director went across the street and did provide some band instruction in the second half of the year um, it's just the nature of small high schools um, we were not going to have a full-time position for our high school band teacher um, it's difficult to run classes where you might only have five students who elected to take that class so we were not going to have a full-time position for the band teacher um, similar in the junior high you know students you know you don't have as many electives in the junior high but students vote with their course selection uh, there was you know we still had kind of you know in, in the um, when I was in school, you would refer to it as industrial arts. Today, we would call it applied technology. There just were not a lot of takers. And um, it also happened, you know, that um, we had the opportunity to add a STEM class. And so, um, and in adding the STEM class, there were fewer students that wanted to take general music. And so, the junior high band position no longer was going to be a full-time position as well. Um, we've had that experience in the past in our district sometimes you can get high quality band directors part-time but they don't want to they, they're always looking for that full-time opportunity so we um, talked to Allison we could maintain her as a full-time band instructor if uh, she wanted to take on the responsibility of fifth grade junior high and high school band and she was was willing to take that on um, we understand it's uh, tremendous workload the other thing that Allison wants to do is she understands that the junior high program is her lifeblood and she wants to see that band program rebuilt and grow and get bigger and so she's committed to that um, a recent development which may help in some some ways um, Ms. Biederman is also not to complicate things but she's going to be starting the year on a maternity leave and so we are in the process of hiring somebody to teach band while she's on maternity leave that person is also available though to possibly at least continue with the fifth grade band so taking that piece off of Allison's plate and so then she would only have to focus on junior high and high school um, we may be able to get a little bit more creative with that I mean it's not uh, cost neutral you know obviously there's a cost involved but um, I think we can address some of the concerns that the parents voiced this evening and then also I know the board members received additional emails from parents but um, I mean we are committed to a long-term band success um, sometimes though again we just don't have the classes to maintain you know two full-time band instructors and that's kind of what we're running into and we actually administratively thought we were you know hey we are keeping somebody whole keeping them full-time and hopefully keeping them more committed to our district by by allowing that to occur 
but we can get creative and provide additional support so that, again, I think the parents, the district, we have the same goal in mind. We want a thriving band program long term. Yeah, I mean, I guess um, I, I have strong feelings about this as well. Um, not everybody needs to share their full history, but I mean, like, the arts is very important. I think we all agree with that. Um, band specifically is close to a lot of our hearts. Um, and I guess when I hear that we didn't have the interest to support a full-time band PG teacher at the high school and at the junior high, I mean, I kind of ask myself the question of what comes first in that scenario. Is it the quality of the program or the, the lack of, of a robust program during COVID that sort of made interest wane? And, um, you know, how do we, so the question that I ask myself is how do we rebuild a robust program so that the interest is there? And I, I hear that very clearly the concerns of the parents and I, I tend to agree with, with where they're at in terms of their um, sort of nervousness about the future of this program if we, you know, um, if the resources are stretched really thin. So I think, you know, that is, but I also hear what you're saying, Kevin, if there's not the interest, we can't really staff for interest that isn't there in the hopes of building up the program. So. I guess that's the challenge is how do we build the supporting programs around um, Ms. Biederman so that she can, um, we can get to a point where the program is, is like it was in its heightened years. I mean, I guess in terms of what's gonna be offered to students, that's the question, the other question I have is if you think back you know, I mean, in, from my perspective at Westmont, like five years ago when the band program was really strong um, at the high school and at the junior high, programmatically, um, from a student's perspective, what did we have then that we will not be offering now? And that's the part of the picture that I'm not really clear on. Like, have we eliminated jazz band? Have we eliminated marching band? Like, do you know? Do you understand right. what I'm asking? And yeah. it's, it's more... Um like here at the junior high, for instance, if you if you looked at the junior high band's teacher schedule, a small portion of the day was band. So, you know, if you think of a full-time person as 1.0, um, 0.3 of that person's day was band. The other portions of the day was like, uh, was a more of a music appreciation class. Okay. Well, you know, that's an elective that kids self-select. And again, it wasn't something. Um, they also, the teacher also assisted with um, the high school if, or junior high, if you remember their schedule, they have STAR, they have Expo, yep. and would support STAR, support Expo. And so, um, again, there's, there's other teachers who can pick up that, you know, so um, the, the, the schedule wasn't gonna be a full-time schedule okay at the at the junior high yeah and then the same thing at the high school some of the courses like ap music we had five students who right. registered for ap music well it's difficult to run a course with just five mm -hmm. students and so so based on what you're saying it sounds to me like it's some more of the music education coursework that is being like scaled back versus right. the actual right it's band. Yeah. that's what's causing our loss of a right. full time right right it isn't okay. uh well the the junior high band numbers are down you know no doubt about it i was going to say how was our numbers before because i know my son stopped right. doing band right. because we're, we're probably about half COVID. of what so. we normally would be okay so normally we would have 20 to 25 students per grade level we're at 10 to 12 Per grade level okay. going into next year yeah. you know and so one of the challenges for Ms. Biederman is um, you know recruiting students getting more students to to sign up for the junior high band you know that's part of part of the charge yeah I mean I just speaking from my own experience my daughter in fifth grade was she started band last year but the first three sessions were over zoom and after three sessions she was like eh. Right. I don't want to do this anymore. Like I nor I believe that normally she would have been excited about band, and so I do think the COVID factor has impacted us here. And so it's just a matter. I right. think, 
I, I, I think it's a really big challenge for us as a district and for, for Ms. Biederman <laughs> specifically to try to, you know, generate that excitement again so that we get back to a point where, um, you know, the, the, the program is at its, where it was at its heightened stage. Right, and I think the, you know, for various reasons, we've had some turnover in our band staff and that's always a challenge as well. Yep. Because, um, you know, um, sometimes if st students don't, you know, you have some students who love music and love band and regardless of who the instructor is, they're going to be a part of it. Um, some students, it's because they have a relationship with that person. And for other students, it maybe isn't their first love. And when somebody new comes along, this is somebody who doesn't know me and I can very quietly leave and nobody's gonna be hounding me that, hey, how come I didn't see you yeah. on my class list? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so consistency really helps. Uh, one more question. question. You mentioned, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned AP music. Do we have regular music classes at the high school as well, or just an AP class? Um, the the like music theory is AP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know they have beyond band. They, there's guitar. Okay. Um, there's there's other courses, but um, those are actually taught by the chorus teacher. Okay. All right. Thank you. My question is about uh, the time you know FTE you were speaking of. Do you include the extracurricular? Um, timing um, that the teachers put in, like, you know, what we were speaking of, like, um, junior high band, um, and what that um, instructor, the time, I guess, they put into the, the school timing, the FTE, do you include the extracurricular time that they're putting in? And I, I think that was part of the concern is yeah. we're not uh, calculating that time, uh, or how do we? That the, that well, the, the time for like marching band and concerts and those things, those are actually paid through stipends. Okay. So that's not part of their um, teaching FTE, mm -hmm. but we account for that with stipends. And so, um, you know, Ms. Biederman would have the high school stipends and the junior high stipends as well because she'd be picking up those performances and jazz band and those things as well. And then my second question was about um, like choir, I guess the other music um, um, groups are teaching. Do you have numbers on that? Are those numbers the same as it pre-COVID or? Their, their numbers are the, the same. Um, and that's one area, um, you know, for instance, like Mr. Erlob, when we hired him, he was not full time. But over the course of him being at the high school, his numbers have increased. Mm -hmm. We've increased sections. And as a result, he's- From enrollment. Right, right. And I think that may have happened also with the junior high choir as well. So is there a separate person in charge of the junior high choir and a sep and the high school, but not for band? Just um, because of primarily because of numbers? Right, right. It's it's more teaching FT. Like we could have we could have a separate band teacher, mm -hmm. but you would have a part time band teacher and you'd have a part time high school teacher. And again, you can fill those positions, but um, we experience if you can believe it or not, more turnover in our band program because of the fact that, you know, every full spring time. somebody's looking for a full-time job. Have we ever had a full-time band director at the high school? Uh, yes. And uh, the numbers were were stronger in, in like the AP music and some of those other areas. I guess, because I feel like we could talk about this all night. I feel like it's worthy of a, a bigger discussion item with some some of these stats kind of spelled mm. out for us. Um, sure. So presentation of sorts, um, you know, Laura said we don't need to all give our clarinetist over here. Um, <laughs> so first chair in junior high. Um, I think it, we're, and you know, as you said, Kevin, I think we're all really passionate about the arts. I think that's no question. And I hope that people listening or who watch this know that. Um, and so, I, but I think that this is concerning and especially I don't want cost to, to ever be something. I don't wanna be one of those districts where it's the money, especially given, um, you know, 
some of our recently approved contracts and, and whatnot, I think that, you know, we got to save our BAM program. Um, I think that's got to be a top priority. We got to find, find the money for that for sure. Um, and so if we could maybe make it a discussion item and get some more details and some more stats and the evolution, what did it look like here? What were our numbers? And just try and dig into this a little bit more. Um, I think it's time based on what I've heard and experienced so far in my time on the board as far as the band programs go. Would that be okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. That yes. makes sense yes. to me. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, part of that. So, um, saxophone is here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I can confidently say that I would not be here today if it were not for the fine arts. Um, so, they are very, very close to my heart. Um, I'd love to see how we could get... Um, Break some rules and figure some things out that other schools don't do. Move away from the status quo to um, add through subtraction or whatever it may be, right? Partner with our community. Mm -hmm. um, we mm -hmm. are a musical community. We are mm -hmm. founded on music, right? How we can utilize the talent and the interest and, um, and the passion that lives in our community to help build our band program back up and our music program to be, you know, really just um, a strong program again. Uh, I get it through managing people that when you have some turnover, like we've seen in the band, that um, it results in turnover of the people who are, who are in the program. Um, I'd love to see how we could just, you know, think of different options, maybe a assistant band director or make it a band director position in the, in the district and they have an assistant. So just something that that in some way we could share a little bit of, and maybe that's what this person is who can help with the fifth grade band, like, um, and then maybe that person can kind of help build the program as well, and and Ms. Biederman can have a partner, and you know, just how we could think outside the box on this. Um, I I know I came I came from a much larger district, um, although very close by, um, and I was kind of amazed by how much we offer in in band because um, that, was, that was not offered in my significantly larger dif district when I was growing up. So maybe it's a piece of we're stretching ourselves really super thin and we could add through subtraction by, by getting a little bit narrower and building things and, 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 and kind of making things stronger before we're too stretched out. But that's some stuff I'd love to see in, in you know, a potential discussion in the future, some ideas. It's yep. a great idea. I feel like the... Um Whoever's going to be helping with the fifth grade, like that helps for now. But I think this is a bigger, right. mm -hmm. a bigger right. topic right. of discussion yeah. for sure. I'm All just right. concerned if we have reduced availability, we we will have reduced interest. Absolutely. You know, it will be self fulfilling. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that's yeah, I, exactly right. I agree. I think there was there was there were someone that spoke this evening that said that that it, it, it's a snowball that could get out of, out of control. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and to mm -hmm. your point, and I. Let's talk about what the future looks like. It's mm -hmm. not a decision to do this now, mm -hmm. right. and then and then let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. This is this is something we don't want to happen, mm -hmm. but we understand why it's happening. Right. I think we all understand why, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I think anyone would make the same decision given the circumstances. Now let's talk about how can we change the circumstances mm -hmm. yep. so that so that we can get back to mm -hmm. where we all think we want to be, which is where we were before. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think something that could be helpful is maybe just following up with what, what is the information that we would want as a board from Kevin exactly about the band, like enrollment numbers on these AP music classes and, and so on and right. so forth. So Previous staffing versus staffing Pre now. Exactly. Like, okay. Yeah. So what, what it, you know, things. I think that could be helpful. Yeah. To, to start with, but yeah. also what's the mm -hmm. continuing yes, conversation absolutely. about yes. that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. And I want to be super clear. When I say addition through subtraction, I'm not talking about like slashing things. We're talking about being very yeah, like right. surgical in where is the interest and where can we grow it, right? Where can we put the resources that we have, the people, the people resources that we have, right? Mm -hmm. Because time is a resource. A person's time is a resource. Um, you know, not just their FTE status or their stipends or, or whatever it may be, but you know, how we can take the resources that we have and really um, maximize our, our potential there and our benefit. Absolutely. So, um, future agenda. Yep. Uh, July even, or is that too too soon for people no, to be can. prepared for that? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Kevin. <laughs> I, I am pulled together. Thank you. All right. Uh, 
moving on. Uh, a couple more things. Uh, committees, um, you know, the board went through their process to select committees. Last week we had our admin retreat and the admin does the same thing. And so now I'll be uh, reaching out to board members and, you know, some of the admins serve on the same committees. And so we'll be putting together that uh, committee, you know, those dates and I'll be finding out from you, you know, days of weeks, you know, times that work best for you so that we can put together that calendar and get working on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I asked for you to talk about committees yeah. um, mostly because I was, I've was i been thinking a lot about the communications sure. slash PR committee. And I, um, you know, I really feel for our community right now because the whole board even has changed. Mm -hmm. And I don't, oh, yeah. I don't think they know us and I don't think they know our backgrounds and, um, you know, even how we ended up in our seats. And so... I, I'm not on the communication slash PR committee, but I have a lot of ideas in my head. And so oh, I, I want to be on that <laughs> PR for years now. So I, I am um, hoping we get a PR person for our district. That's still a fight for my next four And years. I feel like Leah's point of like, how can we leverage the great talent and resources in our community mm -hmm. to do, um, you know, what we need to do with communications, not just about like, PR about what's happening in the district, but just straight up like one-on-one uh, -on -one communication or or back and forth communication with the community is. Um, I just I just think we, um, you know, we need to to get rolling on that, frankly, and that's why I put committees on here is because that to me would be the priority committee um, to get scheduled, you know, as soon as we can. I mean, I know there's lots of committees, but that one's hot on my brain right sure. now. Sure, sure. And then uh, my final item is a uh, quick update on strategic plan. The board admin, we had a workshop last week. The admin team took the feedback from the board and we're tweaking the strategic plan. We're meeting again this Thursday to continue that work. And then um, <clears throat> we'll be meeting with the board strategic plan committee, kind of review that work, get feedback, and then bring it back to uh, the full board for another look at and then, then run past our community. How is the strategic planning process intersecting with the future elementary planning process? Is there a intersection there? Um, what's, what's your view on that, Kevin? It, it, there is in terms of, you know, part of the strategic plan, obviously, there's, uh, you know, going to be, you know, academic goals. And so, the you know part of the action plan then is going to be the work done at each of the okay. levels and so that's where the you know again this whole idea of how do we best utilize our resources comes into into play okay um side note it actually refers to this but is not about this um that retreat was one of our special board meetings um, yes. And I know we've brought it up before, but right. I just want to remind her to bring it up again. I got a lot of questions about what was going on. Is there a way we can special board meeting, admin board retreat, or we just need to put that in those emails because parents start getting frantic. Why is there a special board meeting? What did I miss out on? Did I miss some communication? So if we could just kind of bump sure. that into the emails. Yeah, we can do that. And then I also encourage people to take a look at the agenda because typically the agenda also indicates it's posted, right? what's happening at the, at the meetings. So our, our most recent special meeting was the new board member orientation, right. you know, so. Maybe a little bit of PTSD from all of the special <laughs> board meetings. Last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, not to heart and, you know, like beat the point, but I think it goes back to the communications mm -hmm. um, and that and getting our plan together for better communications because I do think with that lacking a bit, we're, we've got a lot of nervous community members for good reason. It's been a rough, it's been a rough year and a half or more. Yeah. So, um, yeah, maybe like an outline or an agenda. Outline I, or yeah, yeah. yeah I would like to say though, everything has been, aside from just like this little tweaking, everything's been upfront, transparent, out there, ready to roll. Absolutely. So we just got to gain the trust back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
I have just a couple quick questions, super quick. Committees, um, sorry, and sorry if I missed this. You're going to put the calendar together, and will we get that before the next meeting or yeah. at the next? Oh, before. Okay, awesome. And then um, summer school, I said thank you for sharing oh, the yeah. numbers there. I that. there yeah. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. But with, with these numbers, though, and, like, well, why don't you say what you're going to say about it, and then I'll see if I still have any question. Yeah, okay. so, so basically, yeah, I shared with the board uh, kind of where we're at with numbers. So at the elementary level, we have 86 students. Uh, K through five, junior high is 30 students. The high school, their program is a little different because it's not only the junior high and the um, elementary is focusing on closing gaps as a result of this past year. The high school is a combination of closing the gaps, so like the Boost Mass, Boost English, that's for those students, uh, credit recovery, but then uh, their team program, that's for incoming freshmen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the bump up to honors math, bump up to honors pre-calc, those are students who want to try to go into that higher level math. And then the um, AP human geography and freshman, freshman orientation, that's every freshman mm -hmm. um, attends for a couple days prior to the start of the school year. And AP human geography, that's uh, primarily freshman again, but it's to, they do some work over the summer in preparation for the upcoming school year. But then we will also, um, at the end of the summer program, and as we enter the new school year, track those students and measure their progress and see if the, the, what we are hoping we're accomplishing through the program, you know, that actually happens. Awesome. Um, so my one question about that was, and I think this is also great, and we're like just trying to scoop in any student who might have had a particularly tricky time last year. Um, the one, the one piece of data that I was looking for is just how many of how many students were invited and how many attended okay. just those two numbers side yeah. by side Thank and you. the ones who didn't attend like what happened there and what are we going to do for those kids because I think we're so good about getting every kid you right. know or at least trying to right. and so that group is the one I'm wondering about and I think it, you know I'll get that data for you I know it's pretty high great you know the students were invited who were invited and attending it was pretty high we did some students know, but yeah, I can get that information. Awesome. For you. All right, sure. thank you. Kevin, is that it? Yep, that's okay. it. All right, um, do we have any board reports tonight? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm on the SACID. Yay. Boards. <laughs> <laughs> There are two <laughs> that I found out. Um, so I'm going to try to get in the habit of kind of um, just letting you guys know kind of what's going on on the SACID board. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow, and just like us, we're only meeting once a month right now, so there's not a whole heck of a lot. Um, and also, just like us, there has been a significant amount of turnover on that board. Um, probably 60% of it is new or something like that. So um, we didn't do much at the last meeting except um, finalize the contract of the executive director, um, kind of their uh, superintendent position, if you will, to, to just give you kind of uh, something to compare to. Um, and then we have a meeting tomorrow where we'll do some more stuff. But I'm gonna try to get in the habit of, they give me some really good talking points every meeting, but we just didn't have any thing to talk about after the last meeting. So I will try to put it into board reports when I have it. <laughs> That's great. And thank you, Leah. Are you meeting in person or are you meeting? Over we Zoom? are meeting in person. Yes. Although not um, at the administrative center. We're at um, the school, Southeast School in Lyle right now. Okay. Naperville. Yeah. Okay. Thank so you. At some point down the line, once you're rolling along good, I do want to go with you. Yeah, totally. Since I'm backup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she's not going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're providing protection. Or? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I did. I did offer to join the finance committee too to you know learn even more about school finance, <laughs> special education that's, school that's finance. That's a total different animal than a school. Ooh, right? I just yep. Yeah. I don't know what I was doing with Ooh. that one, but I like numbers. <laughs> yeah. Like those spreadsheets. Mm-hmm. Um, any other board reports? Okay. Um, do we have any other public comments? No? Okay, future meetings and events. Um, we have our next board meeting on July 20th. Um, that will be at South School, is that correct? Correct, okay. there, there's a conflict mm. at the Village Hall. So we get bumped then. Mm -hmm. And right. then um, we'll be at South. We're working on having somebody 
um, broadcast it for us. If not, then we'll try to with our own people like we did last summer, if you remember that, try mm -hmm. to, to do it. So the, definitely we'll get recorded, but we're going to also hope to live stream it, okay. unlike tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I also just wanted to mention in terms of future events, um, Thursday nights here in town are cruising nights, um, but there is also a table that the district um, usually hosts, and we, there's books, and um, usually an administrator or two mans the tables so they can interact with the community, so that's a great opportunity for community members to just engage with district leadership and, and um, you know, encourage reading and fun. So, uh, cruising nights. I keep waving to do. someone and he doesn't recognize me, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no mask, Kevin, the, without the mask. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Okay, um, if there's nothing else, I'll take a motion, Cheryl will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Meeting adjourned.